I'm Des Zuckerman. Welcome to my podcast, The World of Sacred Healing, where we learn about and discuss the magic and the mystery of the spiritual life and the deep healing of the soul. My current project is a book that I'm working on called Magical Beings of the Natural World. And this really is a a compilation of stories that I have about encounters with various magical beings, fairies, elves, devas, elementals, and spirit animals. So I'm very excited to share here some excerpts from this book. Magical Beings of the Natural World What Fairies Look Like The most whimsical beings that walk between the worlds are fairies. Sometimes called little people, brownies, or pixies, they might look like tiny humans. But more often, they look like odd little animals with some human-like features. Some fairies have long dramatic wings that resemble butterflies, and others have tiny little hummingbird-like wings. They do not have feathers like birds, nor do their wings resemble bats with thin layer of skin stretched over small bones. Instead, their wings are more like insects. Most of them have thin, iridescent skin stretched over a wing-shaped frame that can appear almost invisible, like dragonfly wings, unless you're able to get up close and you look very carefully. Some fairies appear to be only light, and they glow in shapes of radiant beings that shimmer. These fey folk pulse with the available light, reflecting the colors around them. They are unlike any other creatures I have seen in photographs or personally witnessed in our world. Fairies are distinct from any other species in this earthly realm. The first time I remember seeing a fairy was when I was about six years old. I may have seen them before, but I don't remember any earlier encounters. My sister friend, Denise, and I were spending the night in my brand new bedroom, painted baby blue, with all built-in furniture around the entire room, as was very popular in the 1950s. Everything in the room was painted baby blue except for one entire wall papered with ballerinas twirling in perfect arabesques on a field of periwinkle blue. There was even a built-in dollhouse with a tiny staircase. It was an amazing dream bedroom and I felt like a princess in my castle. On that Saturday morning, Denise and I were still curled up in our beds giggling while we watched the light streaming through the curtains. Suddenly, I spotted a small splash of rainbow sparkling light hovering near the top of the window. I pointed at it, and Denise saw it too. We watched the rainbow light for a few seconds, and then we lost interest. But the light was not like any prism rainbow I'd ever seen before, so I kind of kept my eye on it. As it began to move, I realized nothing had changed. The window was the same, the Southern California morning sun was the same, and we were in the same place under our blankets. But somehow, now the light had moved to the ceiling, and it was clearly traveling across the room to the light fixture. It stayed there for a minute or so, and then fluttered over to the wall across from the window and perched on top of a tall built-in cupboard. As I sat still, we both could make out little wings and legs, then arms and a face. She was about three inches tall and wearing what appeared to be a dress made of shimmering and sparkling rainbow light. Like light refracted through a prism, but in the shape of the softest, most delicate clothing ever. The longer we looked, the clearer she got, holding our breath, barely whispering to each other. Now we both could see the fairy, her legs dangling off the trim of the cupboard and little bare feet swung in the air. 
long, loose, stringy yellow hair fell haphazardly over her rainbow dress. Her eyes were dark, tilted up, and wide like cat eyes, almost on either side of her face. Her hands steadied her on the trim as she looked down a long and narrow nose at us. She was so clear, so present, and so alive. I kept blinking to be sure I was really seeing her there in my very own bedroom. Then suddenly she was gone, vanished into the air. We jumped up and ran, looking everywhere in the room for her, until we finally gave up after a thorough search. Fifty years later, Denise and I both remembered the fairy in my blue bedroom, and we talked about it still as captured magic in whispered tones, forever amazed at what that Saturday morning had revealed. The sighting of my first fairy kept the window to this magic realm open for me and forever made me awake to the truth of trusting my own eyes. I think it really gave me my inner enthusiasm for the mystery of life. I was fortunate this happened when I was so little, but it was during later experiences that I truly begin to learn the lessons of fairy magic. Thank you so much for joining me. I've loved spending time with you. Please don't forget to leave a review. Visit us at YourSacredAnatomy.com. Des's book is out now. She has a live event on December 11th at 10 o'clock. You can learn more and sign up for it if you go to her website, YourSacredAnatomy.com.